Is it the end of C programming language? You heard it right. It's been 53 years now we have this language called C programming and then it's a very famous programming language. It is also called the mother of all the languages. It's because all the recent languages are actually derived from this language called C. And then being a system programming language, it is used in multiple places. Think about the OS which you are using. Think about all the embedded softwares. Think about all the IoT devices. They are running on C language. Now, it's a, such an important language, right? And now I'm saying, is it dead? Now, of course, I have put a question mark there because we have some answers for it. But let's talk about why even I'm saying that C might be dead. First one, the thing is, when you go back to 1970s, IT industry was very different. It's all about uh, making your computer work in a way that it will give you some output, it can do some calculations, it can do some basic stuff. But as we progress, there are multiple things which came into picture in terms of memory, in terms of uh, speed, in terms of programmers who can write buggy code. The thing is, in the earlier days to be a programmer, you have to do a lot of hard work. But nowadays, as a programmer, you just go for self-learning or you can just watch some YouTube videos and now you can call yourself as a programmer. Of course, you can build applications. But the thing is, it's very difficult to write a code which works. And also, it's very, very difficult to write a code which will always work. Okay, so that's the thing. And that's why we need a modern languages. Of course, in the C and C++ domain, they are doing a lot of upgrades to the language. They're adding new features. Uh, they are solving the existing bugs. But still, we are missing some important modern features. And that's where there are multiple languages which claimed to be C killer. In fact, in this last 50 years, we have a lot of languages, system programming languages, which says, hey, you know, we are going to replace C. But no one was able to do it. But now we have two languages which are looking promising. The first one is Rust. Now, Rust being a programming language, it was, I mean, it's been, it's been a long time now we have Rust in the world. The only thing is, it took some time for Rust to get that popularity. And then moving from a language like C and using Rust is a big step, not in just terms of work, in terms of learning as well. Now, Rust is an awesome language. It provides a lot of different features. If you go to the website, it says a language empowering everyone to build reliable. Okay, that's an important word there. Reliable and efficient software. Now, in terms of speed, it's not that fast compared to C. Maybe 5 or 10% you will get the speed comparison. But then you can build an application which is reliable and efficient software. In terms of C, it gives you a lot of different features. But then as a programmer, it is your responsibility to use it well. And we are humans, right? Of course, we are moving towards AI. Of course, in future, AI will decide the software. But now, as a human, we make mistakes. And if you don't understand what mistakes you're making, that's a problem, right? And Russ says, okay, I will not allow you to make mistakes. That's right. Basically, in C languages, what you do is you write the code. If it compiles, you feel very happy. You run it. You feel very, very happy because it is running. But then it works for your input. But as a, as a client or there might be some scenarios, you get a weird input or maybe the, soft, the software is behaving in a different way from what you want it to do, right? Russ says, hey, don't worry. I will not even allow you to compile your code if you make some mistakes which can result in abnormal behavior. So Rust checks everything at the compile time itself. Okay, so it has a lot of different features. One of the things which I loved about Rust is it has a concept of borrowing and ownership of variables and memory. And that's what makes it as a memory safe language. And that's very important. When you talk about programming language using which you're building an application, you're working with memory. So don't do anything which will harm your software in terms of memory leaking, in terms of memory safety, right? Uh, one of the problems also we have in C, of course in C++ we do have, we can use concurrency, but then we have to use external libraries and it is not well managed. Russ says, okay, I will give you concurrency as well. That's inbuilt. And of course, right, we, we do want concurrency is because we are living in a world of multi-core CPUs on servers. So we, we need to use that power. Next, I want to talk about is error handling. Of course, in C as well, you can handle the errors, but then you normally do that with the help of return or error codes. It's not that efficient. Uh, we are talking about high level languages, modern languages now, which helps you as a developer to build a better application and to handle the errors. Russ says, I will give you out of the box. So by doing this, we are assuring that we have memory safety and also we have threads and that too with thread safety. It's not like the moment you use threads, you will get uh, data, race, data racing conditions or uh, you will get deadlocks there. Uh, you can handle those things in Rust properly. And also about the ecosystem. Yes, the problem is 
C is there from a long time and it has a good ecosystem. But coming back to Rust, Rust is new language, right? So it's not that new, but then still new compared to, compared to C language. It will take some time for Rust to get that ecosystem. And one more thing about Rust is it supports all the modern features of a language like closures. We have generics, iterators. So we, it provides you all those, all those features out of the box. Now you might be saying, okay, there might be a new language. Who is using it? Okay, now think about any famous OS. You're talking about uh, Windows? Right, the Windows OS. Now, this is the article from Microsoft. Uh, I mean, it is there on the register. And basically, they Microsoft says they are moving from C++ to Rust for their kernel. Uh, so in the recent, uh, the number of lines of code, so you can see they have already using 1,52,000 lines of Rust code and about 96,000 lines of C++. And they are slowly moving away from C++ because they want to achieve memory safety. Okay, now, Rust is good, right? So I can say Rust might replace C in future. Of course, for a long time, they will both be in the market. It's not like, and it never happened, right? The moment you have a new language, now you will say, okay, I'm done with C, let's use Rust. No, that's not how, how industry works. There are so many softwares which are already built and moving away from one language to other language will take time. But of course, if you want to be a system programmer now, think about learning Rust as well. But what about the new language, which is Zig? Now, Zig, promises a lot of different stuff. The problem with Rust is it's a great language, but then it's difficult to learn. Imagine a programmer who is learning a programming language for the first time. In fact, we recommend that you start with C language, right? So, because if you want to be a programmer, your first language should be C, because that's where you actually learn how to write code, not with JavaScript, not with Python, because they are high level languages. You're not sure what is happening behind the scene, what is happening on the metal or on your CPU. So if you want to understand what is happening behind the scene, what is, how do you manage memory? C is very important. So first learn C and then move towards Rust. But again, the problem is you have to learn two languages. And that's why Zig says, why you have to learn two languages? Why can't you just one language, which is powerful like Rust, but it's also easy to learn. So that's your Zig language, which is a general purpose language. And this is a simple language. That's what they promise. So we don't have hidden control flow here. The thing is in some programming language, let's say if we talk about C++, it supports operator overloading, which is an awesome concept. I love it. I used to love it. Uh, I'm a Java programmer now. So Java programmer says we don't do that here, right? So we don't have operator overloading. But the thing is with operator overloading, if you are calling, if you're saying, let's say A plus B, you're not sure, is it adding or is it calling a function? So there's a hidden flow behind the scene. Zig says, let's not do that. So there's no hidden control flow here, uh, no hidden memory allocation. So you have to allocate the memory by yourself. And also there's no preprocessor and no macros. There have been some cases where in C++, basically you write those macros, right? The preprocessors, -pre hash, right? A lot of things are happening behind the scene. You're not even sure. And if your application is not working, you're not sure, is it your code which is not working or the, or the preprocessor pre which are not working? Uh, so that's one of the issue. It also supports com time, which is compile time execution, where there are certain static operations which you do in your code will happen at compile time itself. It will improve the speed. And yeah, so this, this looks cool. In fact, I will try to make a video on Zig as a writing a code of the first look of Zig and Rust for sure. One of the questions again arise uh, is, will it replace C? C, first of all, this is a very new programming language. I think it was released in 2009. So it's only been three to four years now and they don't even have the full version. So you can see they're still into 0 0.10 version. Uh, so we are waiting for the full version yet, uh, but we do have a compiler, you can try it out. And who is using it? Uh, so basically for JavaScript, we have different runtimes, right? Uh, we have Node.js and also we have a new runtime which is bun.js which is using Zig, Zig Zag Zoo. Yeah. So basically they are using Zig and it looks promising. So if these companies are adapting uh, these new languages, then yes, it will be soon when you will not be using C programming language for system programming. Okay, but uh, will, it, uh, will it be quick? No, it will take a lot of time. So when you become a programmer, when you complete your career, maybe at that time, Rust and Zig will be the primary languages for system programming, not C. And if you're learning C and if you're thinking, should we learn Rust and Zig directly? No, complete C, that's very important. Uh, that will teach you how to think about a programming language because Rust is difficult to learn. And if you want to learn Rust and Zig in future, let me know in the comment sections. I will make a series on, at least on Rust, full series. Zig might be some introduction. So that's it from this video. C is not dead. That's the final count. It will take time. It's almost dying, but not dead. So that's it from this video. I hope you liked it. Hit that like button and do subscribe for further videos. Bye-bye.